George and Jared, I'm going to have you guys come over here and sit with your class, please. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the risen Christ. Amen. This, this is our opportunity to gather together, to give thanks, uh, to acknowledge our seniors. And so my message will focus on them, but what I have to say really pertains to all of us. And so as we join in this time of digging into the Word, uh, know that uh, these words apply to, to us all. First of all, I can't believe today is already here. I can't believe that we are in the midst of celebrating all of your graduations. I can't believe it because uh, I happen to have two in this class that are graduating, but in doing so, I happen to get to know all of you uh, in a much deeper and richer way, not just as your pastors, but seeing you at and involved in so many things. To see you from when you were all shorter than I was to now where 50% of you are taller than I am, right? But in doing so, I have, and this church body has also witnessed your growth. You're growing in not just your height, not just in years, but in your knowledge, in your wisdom, in your faith. We have seen you take on challenges, and we've seen you succeed. We've seen you work together on teams and here at church. We've seen you work independently. We've seen you thrive. And I would like to tell you, I would like to tell you that that's how the rest of your life will be. That it will all be like that. That you will succeed. But as some of you have already discovered, life isn't always easy. There are challenges that we face. Some of them are hard. Really hard. And as you ponder that, I want to share with you one other text for us today. It comes from John 10, starts with verse 27. And uh, I'm thankful we had the chicks because I think this relates so well. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. This understanding of sheep in the Bible, and as Christ as the Good Shepherd, is woven all throughout Scripture. And it is an amazing example of of Christ watching over us at every step of our lives, our going in and our coming out. Every point, in the high points of your success and at the struggles that you face. We know that God is with you every step of the way. But as my father-in-law has pointed out to me a few times, having had sheep, the reference to shepherd and sheep isn't a compliment to us as sheep, okay? Sheep are not the smartest animals all the time. We get ourselves in trouble once in a while. We struggle once in a while as we face the challenges of the day. And so do sheep. And so today, in just a little while, you're going to receive a quilt that was lovingly made by Kathy and the whole quilting crew. They made those for you. And in a few moments, we're going to invite you forward and and your family to come up behind you. And and they're going to take that wonderful quilt and they're going to drape it around your shoulders. Right? We purposely, by the way, don't give it to you before the message because we don't want you to sleep through this part. Okay? But we're going to have them drape it over your shoulders. And and that, that quilt, you know, we think of quilts as giving us warmth of of comfort, of, of, of being a really a simple item that often we take for granted. But these quilts represent more than that. 
These quilts represent the fact that you are loved. That this congregation wants you to know that they surround you too. That when you have that wrapped around your shoulders, that you do not walk alone. And more importantly, those quilts represent God's unwavering love for you. Right? And do you know what? You couldn't buy one of those. You couldn't, you couldn't do everything right to receive that gift. You couldn't be perfect enough to get that gift that these quilts represent for you today. You can't. There's absolutely no way to do absolutely everything perfect to receive the gift and love of God. That, that quilt represents a free gift. The free gift of grace that you receive from Jesus Christ. Today, on this glorious day and in these weeks as we celebrate your graduations and as you move on to the next steps in your life, but also on those challenging days. Those days that make you wonder if you can move to the next step. So I need your help. I need you all to come up here with me. And I want you to stand and I want you to look at these uh, fine folks that are here gathered to worship with you today. And as you do this, pretty good looking bunch, isn't it? <laughs> I, would like, uh, I would like your help. I would like you to stand in a moment if what I say reflects your life, or some part of your life. And, and if you could remain standing, I would appreciate your help. You see, these quilts do represent a lot. They represent this gathered body of Christ, this church congregation, uh, at this point in your life. They are here to support and pray and love and care for you. But your life may take you all sorts of places. All sorts of adventures. And you may, you may find a new church home. If you move somewhere else, you may find a new church home. And we pray that's the case. If you find yourself somewhere else, we pray that you do find a church home. And that you become an active part of that congregation too. But this will always be your church too. This will always be your home congregation. And so on those challenging days, those days that uh, make you wonder, what is this all about? Where is God in the midst of these times? I want you to, I want you to witness this with me. I would like you to stand if at some point throughout your life's journey, you were faced with a loss something that was hard for you, a loss of a job or a loss of a, a spouse or a child, the loss of a significant person in your life, the loss of uh, freedom. I'd like you to stand if throughout your life you were faced with hurt or someone said something or did something that hurt you. I'd like you to stand if you have felt the pain of this cold world in small ways or big ways. You see all the people that are standing? They have faced struggles in the midst of their lives. But I'd also like you to remain standing. If you have not allowed those things that challenge you to define you, if you have come to understand that God loves you even in the midst of those challenges. Even in the midst of the struggles that you face, God loves you. They're all still standing. You see, the things that you are going to face, the good and the bad, they do not define you. God's love defines you. How you treat one another in the midst of those gifts, that defines you. 
You are beautiful human beings, filled with gifts, filled with all sorts of talents. You take those talents and you do as God has called you to do. Share them. Share them with all the people that you run into, all the people that you cross paths with, your neighbors. Will you all pray with me? Lord God, just as we all stand in this place, just as we all feel the challenges of this world, Lord, we also embrace the amazing gift of life, the amazing gift of the fact that we all stand here in this place knowing that whatever this world throws at us, you are with us. You hold on to us, you claim us, and you love us, often in spite of who we are, with our imperfections. But also remind us, Lord, that you fashioned us in your image and that through us, We can do amazing things in your name. Amen. Before you sit down, this group of people have been incredibly active in our congregation, leading us in song, leading us in youth activities, being a part of camp, being a part of retreats, going through confirmation. We will miss them. But they are not the future of our church. They are our church. And would you help me to give them a hand for all that they've done in the name of God in this place? Let us 